So a client brought me this computer to take a look at. And what he told me is, whenever he goes to play a game, right at the point where it would start the game up and actually start allowing him to play the game, the computer screen just goes black. But otherwise, the computer works fine. He can have it on, up and running, and do whatever, whatever else he wants to do on it, other than playing games. And it works. Now, the most likely culprit is going to be the video card, which is this card right there. Basically because that's what it does. It processes the 3D graphics for games. The next most likely culprit would be the power supply, this right here. If it's not putting out enough power to the video card, that may be why the computer is losing its display. Third most likely component to be failing would be the motherboard. I have seen a motherboard cause a symptom like that. Similar symptom, uh, but it was a little bit different. You could get a game to run for maybe five or ten minutes, and then the video would drop out. This is different because as soon as the graphics are supposed to come on for the game, the video signal drops out. So the first thing I'm going to do is confirm that this is actually happening. That when a game attempts to start up, the computer loses the video signal and the monitor just goes blank. So we're going to give it a try. This is just a game he happened to have installed on his computer. And when the game starts up, if the video signal coming from the graphics card really does drop out, this light right here, which is now blue, is going to turn to an orange color and probably start blinking if I remember right, which means that the monitor isn't receiving a signal from the graphics card. Just went black, it says no video signal, and there's the orange light. So it has definitely lost the, vi the video signal. And now the computer is still on, so I'll try pressing Alt-Tab. That didn't do it. Error, Control, Shift, Escape. I'm trying to get it to switch from the game back to the Windows desktop. Now Control alt delete Nope. None of that works. Okay, so that is what's happening. It's just losing the signal coming from the graphics card. Okay, so I'm going to flip the main power switch at the back of the power supply just to turn it off. So most likely it is a problem with the graphics card. But I'm going to test a few other things just to make sure that that is the only problem and it's definitely the problem. So the first thing I'm going to do is test the power supply. I've got this power supply tester. How you use one of these is you take out the 24-pin the power from the motherboard, and you plug it in on this side, and you pull out the 8-pin power which is usually closer up to where the processor is. And the processor is right under there. And plug it in to the other side. Now I switch this back on. What it's showing me here is the various voltages. Uh, above each number it's got what the number should be, and then below it's what it actually is. And these all look fine. None of them are low. Uh, a couple of them are slightly high, like the 5.1 on the 5 volts. And this one down here, but that's fine. So, yeah, the power supply looks good. Turn that off and get these plugged back into the motherboard. And when you're taking these off the motherboard, this little clip right here, it's actually not actually going into anything on this power supply tester, but on the motherboard side, there's a little piece of plastic that it holds onto. So when you're taking off the power connectors, you have to kind of hold there, squeeze it, and then take it off. Again, not on uh, this power supply tester because there's there's no bit of plastic there, but down here on the motherboard, there actually is.
Okay, and same deal on here. When you're taking it off, you have to pinch and hold these little levers right there. If you want to see more on how to build a computer and connect everything up, uh, also on the my YouTube channel, I've got the the Home PC Builder 2014 videos that show the entire process of putting a computer together and making sure it all works. Okay. So let's get this turned back on. I'll hit the main power switch and then get it back up and running. And the next thing I'm going to do is make sure the, uh, the rest of the components are working completely stable and not overheating. So a great program for testing the stability of the system overall is called IDA64. A-I-D-A-64. I'll go to the downloads. Choose to download the Extreme Edition. So I ran through the installation, and this is what it looks like. Now under Tools, you'll find the System Stability Test. So it's going to test the CPU, the FPU, the cache, and the system memory. Basically the processor and the memory for the most part. You can also use it to stress the local disks and the GPUs. Now I'm pretty sure the GPU has an issue just based on what's happening so far. So if I tell it to stress to test the GPU right now, it's more than likely going to lose the video signal to the monitor and uh, basically crash. So I'm not going to do that. I'm mainly interested in making sure the CPU and the memory are okay. So right now the CPU usage is right around 25%. I'm going to hit start. and it will go up to 100%. The CPU temperatures while it was idle were in the low 40s. They're now going up to the lower 50s. What I'm going to do is let it run for a period of time to make sure the system is stable and to see how high the temperatures get. So it's been running for 30 minutes and there haven't been any errors. It obviously has not restarted the computer or lost video. The CPU temperatures are now in the upper 50s, which is actually very good for it running at 100% CPU usage for 30 minutes. So I'm sure that overall the system is stable. I'm going to go ahead and stop the test and shut the computer down. So I'm reasonably sure it's the graphics card that's causing the issue. So what I'm going to do is replace it with another one. This is one I just have sitting on a shelf for testing purposes. So to take out these uh, power cables, I'm pinching and pulling. And this video card has two six-pin PCI Express power cables going to it. These little guys right here. Higher end cards will sometimes use these two extra pins that kind of wedge up against the six and become an eight pin power connector. Okay. Looks like it's held in just with one screw back here. And to take out the graphics card, most motherboards will have some kind of a little clip down here that you either pull out away from the card or you push down that will allow the graphics card to be removed. Otherwise, the point of that is to hold it in so it doesn't just fall out accidentally. I'll just pull it out. So, put this up here and grab the replacement. So 
So what I'm doing here is this connector right here will go into this slot on the motherboard. And this part of the video card, part of the faceplate, is going to go just to the right of the motherboard's edge. I'm looking at this computer upside down. That just happens to be the way it's situated. So I'm setting it into the slot and then just give it a little push and it'll go in. And I'm going to put back in that screw. power these little levers right here they clip in to little bits of plastic on the graphics card I'm just gonna kind of sandwich them together you can only put these in one way you're not gonna make any mistake by putting it in backwards and doing any harm okay Plug back in the monitor cable, and turn on the power. So what I'm going to do now is try playing that game again and see if it works. Okay, so I'm going to get the game playing. Alright, here we go. All right, so this is definitely going for longer than with the other graphics card. This is looking good. Hit the space bar so I can skip that opening cutscene. Whoa, okay. Camera angles are terrible. You have to use the mouse to be able to see where you're going. So this is looking very good. I, I think uh, we've narrowed it down to a problem with the graphics adapter. So I let the game run for about 30 minutes just to make sure it was working. And I think without a doubt we've narrowed it down to a problem with the original graphics adapter. I called the client and let them know, and what they've decided is just to go get a new graphics card, and they'll put it in themselves. The, uh, the original one, the one with the problem, is a GTX 570. That's an NVIDIA card. And at this point, this card is, I think, four generations old. So it'll be a really nice boost in performance, them getting a new graphics card. Now, I think there's a possibility I can fix this, and I talked to the client, and they said, oh yeah, go ahead and keep it, see what you can do with it. I think it's, uh, it's worth a try. Okay, set this down over here, and I'll go about getting out my video card. Hold down the pins and pull up. Okay, and... Take the screw out. And I'll press the little tab down here to allow me to pull out the graphics card. Okay. Thanks for watching.